All right, so we had some requests about taking apart the Sabi's Workshop lightsaber. And so this is one of the lightsabers from Sabi's Workshop. And it is actually a functioning one, so everything works on this one, as you can hear. So we're just going to take this apart and talk a little bit about how it's assembled today. Um, so first of all, this is the blade. Um, so you probably already are aware to take the blade out, you just have to push it down and then twist counterclockwise and then you can pull the blade out and it's a little bit of a snug fit so you might have to tug a little bit and then once the blade is out you can see how it actually connects into the saber um, so you have these two dimples on either side um, and what those do is they fit into the core of the saber and you have to actually line those up to get it to go in you can't push it in unless you line those up and when you do have it lined up, you can slide it in. So we've got that disconnected. Um, and so now we have the lightsaber itself. Um, so uh, this is basically what you assembled when you put together your lightsaber in the Savi's Workshop um, lightsaber building experience. Uh, so to take everything apart, it's pretty simple. You just unscrew the end caps. So these unscrew, they may take a little bit of force, but it's okay to take them apart. You're gonna have to exert a little bit of force. And once you get them loose, um, you can unscrew the end caps. And there's very little risk that you're going to damage something taking it off. The biggest uh, risk is that you damage one of these threads screwing it back on because these are plastic threads. Um, but the actual core of the end cap is a metal thread. So there's the end. And then we have the emitter end, which also screws off the same way. Um, and now we have those two pieces off. Uh, so then you're gonna unscrew the next two pieces. Same thing, twist, grab and twist. You may have to exert a little bit of pressure. And these actually barely screw on, so they come off fairly easy. And you can see that we have the kyber crystal in there with the light glowing because the batteries are still in there. Um, so that's essentially the core. And now we can take off the switch. Just pops off two sides. So now we have the lightsaber kyber crystal in here um, and then the kyber crystal you just kind of push down on one end and it pops out like that so we have our kyber crystal out um, so now we have just basically the the hilts of the saber um, this is a saber core uh, so you have your kyber crystal section here which has kind of a spring-loaded end on one side um, and then the other side is actually firmly mounted in there now at this point if you wanted to actually just change the batteries uh, this is what you would have to do to actually change the batteries so once you have that portion apart, you have this essentially the uh, the end with the sound effects coming out of it. So this is the speaker end here, and then you have your emitter end on the other side. Uh, so what you need to know is these screws here on the center piece all have to do with removing the rest of the saber, which you don't have to do for the battery section um, because the battery is on this end. So here we have the battery end and that's gonna just basically pop and lock in. So you don't have to use a screwdriver or anything. All you do to take it out is push it in gently, twist it counterclockwise, and then pull apart, and it slides right out. And the same thing, it's got the dimples on the side, um, and you have an arrow here to tell you which direction needs to go in, and then it lines up on the inside of that, and you can just slide it back in. So that's your actually uh, your battery holder here. Um, and then once you have this piece out, there is one screw that you need to undo to actually get the batteries out. So that screws right here. It helps if you have a really skinny screwdriver. Um, and this one might actually be a little too thick here. So a smaller screwdriver definitely helps. Um, make sure you hold it like this because when you're screwing, you're putting pressure in on here, you're actually pushing this end away. And this is the end that's gonna come out. So you see, I, I didn't have to unscrew that very far. And the end comes off like that. And you have your uh, AAA batteries in there. So it does take three AAA batteries. So if you need to replace those, that's how you get that out to replace them. Um, and then to put it back on, just put it back together, push the screw in, and then gently screw it back in. Again, this is mostly plastic. So you wanna be careful that you don't strip the screw. Um, once you get it tight, you can feel that it's not gonna move and that's all back together. So that's your battery end piece there. So now we'll actually talk about a little bit about the uh, actual saber hilt. Um, so these are hex uh, screws. They're not regular Phillips head screwdrivers or screws. And so to remove those, you actually move the saber. 
um, you'll need to use a small Allen key. Um, this one fits right inside of each of these hex keys, and then you can loosen them. Uh, again, it's just plastic into plastic, so they're not on there very tight. Um, this is the end. Uh, we're going to be taking apart the battery section here and then the emitter end. Um, so we'll take the one apart first, and they loosen fairly easily. Just go around and take them out enough so that they're loose. Again, you when you're putting it back together, you don't want to over tighten either because it will be just plastic into plastic. And so once you have, there are one, two, three, four of those on the end here. Um, and then once you have them out far enough, you can feel that it gets loose and it wants to start sliding off. You may have to back them out a little further. And you can see that they're not very long. So we'll go ahead and remove those. And then once you have all of those out, you can very gently wiggle the end cap off. And this is where you wanna be very careful because the cables and everything are inside of this and they are still connected. So you don't wanna dislodge any of those cables. And here's the ribbon. Um, you can see the ribbon that is usually the source of everyone's problems down in here. Um, and it is wrapped right around a lot of other cables. Um, so that's why it has issues. Um, it gets pinched. The original one that I had was uh, pinched in two different places and actually cut clean through on one of the lines. Um, so you definitely want to be careful when you're uh, pushing everything back in there to connect it. Uh, so that's the end of the saver there. And then you can see this section comes out. And to remove the ribbon and replace the ribbon, you actually have to take uh, this piece all the way off. And then the intersection here comes out as well. Um, once you get the intersection out, you have a clear shot at the ribbon, as you can see. So this just slides out because it's held in by the same screws and it's all notched, so it can only go in one way. Um, so we'll go ahead and slide this all the way off. So there we have that portion all the way off. Um, and you can see the ribbon actually connects to the circuit board right here. Um, you can use your tweezers to go in there and then just pinch and pull on the plastic piece. So with this apart, and with the cables out of the way, it's really easy to see. You can see down inside there, uh, but essentially that's where the ribbon connects. And then the little section on top has a clamp that holds down the ribbon against the circuit board. And then when you're packing this all back together, you wanna to make sure that sits nice and flat in there so you don't have any issues. Um, really to replace the ribbon, you have to take off both sides. Um, so we'll go ahead and show you what the other side looks like here. Again, same thing with the screws. Go around and loosen all of them. And once they're loose enough, you can usually take them out by hand. So it's important to note that um, the red section would be the sleeve that does not have the, the grill grate on it, and the blue side is the side with the grill grate. Okay, and once you have those screws out, then this end slides right off, just like the other side. Um, the plastic portion where the grill is, is a completely separate piece. Um, so this plastic right here will come off. Um, just make sure when you put it back on, it can really only go on one way. Just make sure you have that lined up correctly when you do put it back on. So here we can slide off the other end piece, slide it back at least enough to be able to see this. Um, so now you have your other end with the ribbon here. Um, again, it does have enough slack to actually allow you to pull out if you have both ends disconnected. 
uh, but without both ends disconnected, it's very tight here. And you don't want to pull too hard on this because what you'll do is if you have a working saber, you'll pull it apart and you'll rip the ribbon right out of the circuit board and then you won't have a working saber anymore. So make sure you give it enough slack. So whichever side has more slack, you can see I have a lot of extra slack on this end. Um, make sure you pull that out and give it the slack inside of this. Um, the way this works is there's a slide slotted piece here on the inside. And once you take off one of the ends, um, I forget which one it is, but let's see if we can figure it out. So we're gonna take this one off here and you can see, there we go. So on the inside here, you can see how this little slide piece actually does slide out. And that's what covers your ribbon. So you wanna take that and slide it out carefully without damaging any of the ribbon there. And then you can slide it back on once you've replaced the ribbon. But what that does is that allows enough slack to go through to the other end of the saber. So you can actually remove the other end as well. And that'll let you slide this portion off because you need the extra room to actually get to what's inside of the saber here with the ribbon. And then once you have it all done, you can put it back together, slide that back in, uh, make sure that the ribbon is sitting down as far as you can inside of the saber so it's flush because you're gonna have to slide the other piece on top of it. And then you'll be able to slide back on this end as well. So that end will slide back onto there like that. Um, once you have these two slit together, you can put on this other end cap and you can see how it has a groove up the whole side. So if you have it on incorrectly, you won't be able to slide it on. You wanna see where that groove is inside. Um, it's in between these two screws here to the right of the sticker. So if you get it lined up correctly with the groove, there we go. So you can see it slides on really easily. There's no need to force it. Um, and then once you have these two sides back together, you can go ahead and go around and put the screws back in. And this is a little tedious because they're so small. I'm probably not using the best tool here. You could use a separate Allen key and it would be a little bit easier. I'm using this multi-tool. You wanna just get them started and you can feel them thread once they start. If they're not going together, then you wanna just make sure you do a little hand starting so you don't strip them and just go around and put those back in. And so there are four screws in the top and four screws in the bottom. And I'm not even making these very tight. I'm just going so the screw comes in contact with the outside plastic. They don't really need to be extremely tight because they all hold it together from the inside. And this end cap, again, is slotted, so it's not gonna spin really. Your only concern is that it would slide off the end, which if all the screws are in, it's not gonna do that. And if you're not sure that you've completely fixed your saber, um, what you can do at this point, uh, once you have the screws in, you can actually put the battery back in um, and then put the Kuiper crystal back in. If you put the battery in the wrong end, you're gonna know it because it'll only fit one way. There we go. So again, the battery's back in. Um, the red side for this one is the one that has the battery. Uh, you can kind of put it in the other side, but it's not gonna let you put it all the way in and lock it. So once you have the battery in, essentially it's powered and you can then put the Kyber crystal inside and you can see I didn't put it all the way in and we've got the noise and the sound effects, which means that the power is wired up correctly and then the only remaining thing is the blade. So you don't know if the blade's gonna for sure light up now or not, uh, but you can see that your power is working. So you do have power to the saber, which is good. So then what we're gonna do next 
is just like we're assembling the saber, we're gonna put the switch back together. And that clap clips on. So it does make the noise uh, without the blade because that's a sign that the blade's not installed. So now from here, we're gonna go ahead and install the blade. So the blade is in and there we can see that the blade lights up. So that way you don't have to assemble the whole saber to determine if the blade works or not with the cable swap. Um, you can just check at this point. So we know the blade does work and now we're free to go ahead and put everything else back onto the saber. Um, so again, this is really just your own personal preference as far as what part goes where, depending on what your bolt build looked like. Um, we're gonna put the end pieces back on here. And these only go one way, so you have to screw them on the right way. And I usually give those a good tighten, tightening there. Um, the base cap will then have to be threaded on. Once you get it threaded, it really goes on nice and easily. Um, if you're having difficulty threading it on, you probably have it cross-threaded and you don't wanna force it because again, these threads are just plastic. And then the emitter end goes back on. And I usually try to get that lined up close with the switch. It's not perfect always. That's close enough there. And now we'll put the blade back on. So now we have our blade in, everything's connected, and the saber works as it should. So I hope this answers some of your questions for those of you who are concerned about um, how the actual saber goes together, comes apart, and how the ribbon works. Um, this pretty much goes over all of that except for removing the actual ribbon. Um, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this.